Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to talk about the altered. So that sound, so, so beautiful, so intense and so lush, but I want to try and understand together what's happening in this color. Because when we're playing jazz and when we're playing improvised music, that sound comes up a lot. So again, it's called the altered scale and it's usually being used to create more tension, more tension on the dominant, on the five chord in order to resolve. Whenever we're creating more tension, whether it's with chords or lines, we're basically making the resolution, the home base stronger. When I was in high school and also later on at new school in New York, I was trying to understand the colors that we use to create tension and release. What I want to do today is divide it into two parts. The first part is we'll explore seven lines that I wrote for you guys. The second half of the video will go over all the fingerings for the outer scale. Okay, so again, I know it's maybe a lot of information. So the first thing that is really great to do is remember it's only colors. It's sounds and colors and we're trying to create tension with different notes to create a resolution that feels stronger. What I'm gonna do is take seven two fives. Each one of them is written out so you can really follow it in a clear way. The PDF is on the Patreon if that's helpful. And we'll talk about why I'm choosing those sounds and what's working uh, in these lines that make that sound pop out. Let's do it. One, so before I start this line, I'll explain that I'm using the altered scale. Now the altered scale on G7 is these notes. G, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F. If you look at these notes, you, we're actually playing A flat melodic minor. So if you know your fingerings for melodic minor, that's definitely helpful. I am thinking about it as a G7 altered sound. But it's not bad to understand it also, you know this fingering if you ever worked on melodic minor shapes. So for the first two five, I'm gonna utilize the sound of G half diminish. Why G half diminish? It's because it's within the scale. The chords for the altered scale are G half diminish, A flat minor major, B flat minor seven, C flat augmented major seven, D flat seven, E flat seven, F half diminish, and again, G half diminish, we're back at the top. So I'm gonna use the D minor seven sound and then shifting from that into the G half diminish over the G seven, which will give me that very specific color of the outer scale. And we're gonna go over all the seven colors, so check it out and make sure you listen to the end. All right, let's do it. Oh, we have another song coming out. This one is called Far From Shore, which is also the title track of this album. Um, it's a song I dearly love and care about and I would love you can support by pre-saving. Thank you so much for all your support and help. The album is coming out, I promise, and it will be really, really cool. All right, so we started the line like this, D sharp to the E. So all these notes for me are really around that D minor sound. Kind of highlighting the nine a little bit, but basically really articulating D minor to my ear. And then after that moment, I hit the G half diminish, and I literally played the seven chord up. So again, there is a lot of tension against the G seven. I'm getting the F, so the seven, the one, the three, and the flat five. And then resolve it to the nine going up. Now a lot of times tensions in jazz and classical music tend to resolve down, so would be a nicer, softer option, but I chose to kind of go up and hang that tension in the air. All right, two five, number two. What's gonna happen here is we're basically using the next chord. The next chord in the scale is A flat minor. So I'm using A flat minor major in the line. Check out the line and then we'll talk about it.
Okay, so what's happening here? Check it out. I started the line in this position here, basically just playing F major 7. You can also play it here, but I just played it here. Literally just getting that 9 from the on the D minor 7. And again, this is not the point right now. It's more talking about the altered when we have the G7. So that sound, the is what's really interesting. Basically, again, articulating A flat minor major, A flat minor triad, and then I'm playing that minor major here. So I played it twice, basically one time just triad, and then I played A flat kind of minor major nine, actually to be specific, and then resolving to the one. One more time, really slow. And on the one, I just resolve it on the six, so I have the A on top, just for sound. You can resolve it in different ways, but I just like that idea of... So I have this... Kind of a line cliche from C, uh, B natural, B flat to A. All right, line number three. So here we're going forward with a triad. So we had G half diminished, A flat to minor major, and now we have B flat minor seven. So I'm gonna use the chord B flat minor seven on the G seven will of course create a lot of tension, but that's what we're trying to do. And again, you don't have to only articulate a triad, you can articulate a triad and go play the scale. There are different versions. I was trying to kind of use mainly the triad so we just hear the different colors of each one of them. So when you're soloing later on, you have a two, five, one in C or in any key, you can kind of pick out the chords that you want. So, you know, if I have two, five, one in C, I can say, okay, D minor, B flat minor to C major seven. Again, it's definitely an intense color, but this is, you know, a part of the trick that we're using when we're articulating the altered scale. Here we go. So what's happening here? So I'm really articulating D minor seven, just literally doing this kind of um, exercise sound. So really articulating D minor starting from the uh, a five to the seven, three, and so on. And then literally doing the same concept on B flat minor seven, and then resolving to the six. So again, if I'm connecting those two slow, and if you need, you also again have the PDF on the Patreon so you can check it out. Line number four. Here we're getting to the B augmented major seven, which is a really cool color, very specific, very strong. Check it out how it sounds, just if I'm playing the triad over G. Ooh, intense, definitely intense, but also beautiful, because we're getting the three, we're getting the sharp four, the augmented, we're getting the one, and we're getting also the sharp nine, so really really cool let's try the line here's the line one more time really slow without the chords so what I'm thinking here is really kind of articulating some of the two going to the, that four surrounding that then chromatically to the five of the D minor so surrounding A and then chromatic to that arpeggio and then playing that like the shade the flat uh, nine to the sharp nine and resolving one more time a little faster Five. Here I'm gonna use basically the D flat seven, which is the trident substitution. It's a simple one, but super effective. So check it out. Now in time with the chords.
So what's happening here? Okay, so I'm basically playing a D minor 9. Very simple, and it's a kind of a fun shape. It's easy to play that fast on guitar, it's very comfortable. And then I'm playing D flat, uh, the same thing, D flat 9, and then resolving to the 5. It's a simple one, but very, very effective. The next one is one of my favorites, so check it out. Alright, so what's happening here? Starting with a D minor 7, two octaves up, and then I played E flat major. Now E flat major, or E flat 7 more accurately, is one of the dominant chords that we're getting within the scale. What I did here is going from the E flat to the D flat and then resolving. So it's a very specific sound. Check out that color. Very harsh, but also really cool because I'm getting the sharp nine, the one, the augmented, right, the flat 13, but then I'm also getting the flat nine, the seven, and the flat five, and then I'm resolving. And it's all in that context of a triad, which is super strong sound, again, against this G. So creating a lot of tension and resolving. Seven, this is the last one, this is the last chord. So what's happening here, the next chord in the scale is F half diminished. Also super cool color against uh, G7. So whenever we have a G7, we can always play that sound. And what are we getting when we're playing the F half diminished? We're getting the seven, the flat nine, the three, and the flat 13. But there is something cool about how it's being arranged in a context of a shape, and. It, a half diminished chord against that G. It's really beautiful, very intense. Check out the line. Yeah, so literally I just played F major 7 to get that 9, I love that sound. And then I played heading up, ascending with just the F half diminished arpeggio and resolved. But there is something about shifting the colors between F major 7 to F half diminished, descending and then ascending, that's kind of cool. I don't know, I, I like that sound, so I... And of course, you can also mix the scale and these tries and move between them. And creating these tension is a really, really fun thing and a cool exploration. All right, so now we're going to the second half of the video, which is mapping out the fingerboard with the altered scales. So this is a little time consuming, but it's also really worth it. We'll go over the seven positions in a clear way so you can really know it and practice it so it's easy to make music. Let's do it. What we're gonna do is map G altered scale in three notes per string from this point to this point. Let's go. One, starting from G. Start from A flat. Again, three notes per string. If you need these, they're also on the Patreon. After you're feeling comfortable, play them in time, slowly, in tempo, chord notes, eighth notes, triple and sixteen. So now from B flat. And the idea is that we want to see, hear the scale as 
as much as possible in different parts of the guitar. Now from C flat. Alright, so these are the positions. Now again, it takes time to figure it out and to kind of feel comfortable with it, but what I would do is play each one of the positions separately until I'm kind of comfortable. I'll play it in time, I'll sing the G, I'll sing the scale, and then I'll play all of them in time and kind of shift between them. The same thing I would do with C major scale. Any exercise with thirds and things like that would be great. The point is just to feel more comfortable so we can create. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this was a little helpful. Um, for me, the altar was kind of like a, a thing that I was always not clear about. So I was trying to just make it a little more clear. So I hope I succeeded even if just by little. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. Peace. Thank you.